Hi, I'm Paul Brody. There's, I think, the three of us here. There's the viewer, me, and Mitch. We're going to be working on the on the tiger cub today, and I got some stuff out of England. I got these. These are the head and the barrel studs. Now, on the last video we did, I talked about these, and I called I called them exhaust studs. If you're wondering why I only have two exhaust studs, it's because I only have two exhaust studs. Nobody caught it, not a single one. I know that you're all eagle-eyed and you're looking around and you see everything, but you missed that one, exhaust studs. These are not exhaust studs. So anyway, I've got them, those are good. I got another nice package. This is from Mike at Hooligans. Look what Mike sent. Fork seals. Allen screws and look at that a gold spark plug I really like it how many of you have a gold spark plug so we're going to talk about a few things these are the axle adjusters on the cub this is basically what I start with and can you see how this piece of sheet metal it's it gets bent so I wasn't happy with that at all so what I did was I bead blasted those pieces and I made them unbent and then I braised them together here. You can see all the braids and then held it in the vise. And I didn't even have to mark the center of the hole because see there, that just lets the drill start exactly in the middle. And then after all that, I got them nickel plated and I think they look very nice. So these parts are all nickel plated. I made these oversized nuts as well. So that's the basic finished product and it's not gonna bend. All of the stock ones I've seen are all bent. I want to talk a little bit about the header that we made last last episode on, on the Cub. It's the first header that I made out of this type of material. It's stainless. Usually I just make a header out of regular tubing and then when there's a low spot, I take the brazing rod, I fill it in, I sand it all up. But Making one that looks perfectly smooth out of stainless, I, I discovered, is a lot more work. Because what happened down here, there was a short piece of angled tubing right here. And this is basically what happened. On the, on the top, on this part here, I matched all the surfaces really well. So something like that. And then on the bottom, it was something like that. So it had to be filled in. I did, I, did, I did TIG passes and then I filed it all up. So I had a low spot kind of on the top and on the bottom and on the back. So I filled those in. It, it took several hours, a bunch of hours. I did the top, I did the bottom. So what I discovered was that when you do that, it pulls. It definitely pulls. Having that heat, the rod, it pulls. So what happened is, is the top, it canceled out the bottom and it stayed the same. But then when I filled in the back, it pulled. And then when I put the muffler on, when I got it all sanded up really nicely, now the muffler was hitting on the swing arm, so that's no good at all. I can't have that. So what I did, and Mitch is going to show you a photo, I put the header back into the bench vise and I took a hacksaw and I cut, I cut halfway. And then I, I pulled it and then I welded it all again. So now I got space here and I got space here. But that was a lot of work, a lot more work than I anticipated. So. Exhaust pipe is looking good now. I'm happy with it. After we've done all that talking, now we're going to assemble the front end of the cub. I got new fork tubes out of England. I got new bushings. Checking the fit. There we go. That's good. And then this goes on top. That's the thread. Just a little bit of oil, just a little, little, little bit of lube. So 
So they go like that on the bike and these have to go down. So I found a socket. You see how the socket is a good match for that size? And Abba Press is a good place to do this. Oh, that's going in well. Okay. Can you see how it's installed now? And there's the other side. I was reading in the manual last night because, you know, I want to be up to date on all this stuff. And there's a space here. And this screws on. And I imagine that oil can leak under the seal and out the thread. So I'm supposed to take a piece of medium twine. That's what it says right there. Medium twine. Can you see that? I'll say it again. Medium twine. I don't know if I have any medium twine. I thought I'd find a... So I guess that's supposed to wrap around there or something. So I'm not sure about that. So I found an O-ring, but I don't think an O-ring is going to go in that space. If I put the O-ring on top and tighten it down, it's just going to squish. So that's not good. So we'll just assemble it like it is. So it should go on pretty nicely. I put a little bit of oil on the seals. See, I've got a little bit of anti-seize there. I know that there are people looking to see what's going on. That's the special tool we made when we took these apart. It's like a, it's kind of a sea wrench. And it works nicely here. It's good to have the right tool for this job. If you don't use the right tool, you'll make a mess of the part. Okay, you don't want to make it super tight. Inside the booty, it's like a rounded section there. So if you're looking at it, there's the outside. I don't know what that does. On some motorcycle, it fits in somewhere, but on this bike, it seems like this fits onto here nicely. I've got that on there. And then this goes on, on the bottom. And so when you put it on, it doesn't sit properly. And then the hose clamp, it always sits at, a, it, it sits at an angle, either this way or, or that way. So what I did on this one here, I was experimenting last night. Can you see how it, it's gone? That lip is gone now. We're going to add on the triple clamps now, so a little bit of white lithium grease. I don't think it's any rocket science stuff. I have brand new balls, so we'll use those. They are one quarter inch, and we want to leave one space, because otherwise it's too much. That's the one space right there. You can't fit a ball in there. It's not enough room. Here's the custom cover that got made. Top nut. Really? 
Okay, we have something going on here. And we have some slop. See that? I think what I have to do is just to uh, knock off the threads a little bit. They just don't quite go far enough down. Let's have a look. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. That's what the wash is. I was looking at this washer and I was thinking, what, what is that for? It couldn't. Okay. Because you don't want the nut going right onto the soft and well, anodizing, hard anodizing. Look at that. Okay. Almost left out a piece. One little washer. How thick is that? 30 thou? I don't know. And now it works. Okay, so. I'm not losing it. Don't worry. It's okay. So there's no, no slop. I got the stops for the steering. See these? These are those alloy, alloy nuts that I made. And can you see how that works? That's the steering stop. Both sides. So that works fine. There's some sort of a, it's like a fiber washer and that goes under the spring on top of the oil seal. So we'll put those on. And these spaces go in the top. If I don't put these in, these are aluminum anodized, then it rattles on the top. So can you see how that fits like that? So all you get to see is that little shoulder right there, just the, just the very top of it. Everything else is hidden. Now we have to put the forks up there. What's interesting about this is that in the Haynes manual, it doesn't man mention any special tool. Well, it does mention a special tool. It mentions a broom handle. It tells you that what you're supposed to do, I guess you're supposed to cut your broom handle off or whatever. And the broom handle, it threads into here. So that you have to have something which, which pulls up the fork too, because there's no way, if you look at this, see how this slides? That's how the travel works. When you put that up like that, you can't push it up all the way. I tried and it doesn't work. So what I did, I made a special tool. And this is the tool. It, it's the same thread. I went on my lathe and I just cut a really quick thread and I've got a handle up here so I can put it on. And so in the manual, in the Haynes manual, it says you have to be careful when you're using a broom handle because you don't want any wood to fall down inside the fork tube. No, I wouldn't want wood inside my fork tube at all. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is all good. Not the easiest fork for assembly, that's what I think. But kind of cool. This is where the fork tube gets slightly larger and it's got to go into the triple clamp. So maybe I'll put on the handle just so it doesn't slip down. And there's the thread, that's what we want because that's where the nut goes into. Okay, it's got anti-seize in there. I don't think there's a washer here. I think it just goes straight in. I should be adding fork oil, but I don't have any fork oil. So I'm gonna have to backtrack a little bit there. Nice. I couldn't have done this with a broom handle. I was just talking to Mitch about that and there is no way that 
if you put a broom handle in there, you could have the force to turn it and pull it up. Because on this, I can turn it with a wrench and pull it up. So, there we go. I, I put a little bit of oil on the tube there. I think that would help. I got the two fender stays and can you see how they're, can you see how this one is slightly, slightly longer? It does make a difference. I won't do anything up tight here. This is just gonna be, this is mock up. Okay, there we go, we got a fender. It does need to be more uniform in the shine, and, but we got a fender. See these here, these are made out of aluminum, they're anodized, and these are the spacers to go in there. I think this is a French headlight. It's hard to find used stuff. All black. It's nice when everything's black. Just a little dab. Remember this? This is the mount for the Speedo. Oh, look at that little speedo. This is made in India, or it came from India. And some people have said, oh, it's not gonna last at all. Still have to figure out how to hook up the cable because the ends don't quite match on either end. Funny how that is. But anyway, it looks like a speedo. If I was out and I got stopped by the bobbies, got a speedo with less than one mile on it. See that little slot right there? There's, there needs to be a little piece that hooks into there and I don't have that piece. So that has to be made. I got this used off a friend. Thank you, Robert, Robert Watson. See how it's a little loose there? I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of masking tape there. So if that fell on the ground, that would be a shame for safety. Okay, see this is a, a two piece. I like the older style, it was just one piece in a pinch lug. So if you know where to buy any of the one piece, I'd like to have a few of those, that'd be nice. It's been great having you in the shop here. Thank you very much. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us coffees, we appreciate that very much. It fuels our channel. We'll see you next time. You take care.